We're off in the Canberra Criterium. Big start from Jake McGee and Michael Lovelock. Michael Lovelock to the front. Notice Mick Rogers is heading the right direction, but he's a bit displaced off the track. So his GPS is picking the direction correct, but it's got the position wrong. Now it's coming back on towards the correct position. Into the first corner with Michael Lovelock in the lead. Playing real time here. Notice Mick overshoots the corner there. GPS playing up, comes back on track. We're tracking Nathan Versi. Nathan Versi is leaving a dark green trail. Mix overshoots there. Notice the overshoot on the corner. This uh, suggests we might be doing something like Kalman filtering. The GPS is looking like it wants to stay on the same path. When it comes to a corner, it tends to overshoot the corner and drop back in. Uh, Mick Rogers is the worst GPS, but uh, that's quite variable. We're tracking Nathan Versi, who uh, leaves a very nice trail, looks very accurate the whole time, it's a dark green. Uh, the worst uh, um, GPS apart from the second worst after Mick is probably Jeremy Ross, Ross with light green trail. Dean Rogers, Michael Lovelock, two shades of red, they're good paths. Mick Rogers, Peter Rogers and Dean Rogers are close together. Perhaps they're working as a team. We need more trackers really to be sure of this. We've got about 8 out of the 25 people that are running here. We could get, uh, if we could persuade everybody to carry a smartphone handset and use one of various different tracking programs, we could uh, download the application and get the whole race and that would be much more useful. It gives you far more context, we could get a better idea of what was going on. Here we've uh, sped up to about 8 times real time. When we zoom out like this, the uh, video compression works far better and we end up with far smaller files. If we track the whole race um, following an interview, following a rider like we were before, the files are very large if they're good quality video and difficult to upload. Now gradually over time you'll see the trails build up, each rider is laying a trail. Notice the red trail is starting to look quite nice, that's two shades of red from Dean Rogers and Michael Lovelock. There's only a few pixels varying in this view, which is why uh, it compresses so well. At this speed it's perhaps a little hard to pick up the strategies. Eight times may be a little bit too fast. One of the things we want to try and work out is what's the optimum speed. You need a speed where you can figure out what's going on, but it's not too dull, not too slow and dull. Notice in the bottom right hand corner the yellow ones are sticking out a bit, and the track is sticking out a bit, and the light green is too. Now everybody, except for Mick, has an Xterra X10 Mini Pro handset. Mick has an Xperia Active. The variability in the other handsets, in terms of tracking, is probably due to how the handsets are being carried. They came all being carried in the back pockets of the riders and if there's other things in there they may be interfering with the GPS antenna or the phone may be oriented to get a better view of the sky with some riders than others. So all the riders should be producing similar tracks except for Mick who's using a different GPS system. If we were able to get uh, other riders to carry trackers we might see a little bit more variability depending on the behaviour of each of their own trackers if they all carried different, each a different type. And they could use a variety of different applications. We can just download the GPX files to put together this this track. But some of the GP, some of the different uh, systems 
modify their data a little bit and if they modify the data differently the uh, variability will show through in this tracking here. So Michael Lovelock's pulling out of the race at this point. Remember we're going eight times normal speed so we're, we're through a fair portion of the race here. Now the three, as we come in towards the end, we're going to focus on uh, Jack McGee, Mick Rogers, and Jeremy Ross, and they've probably got the three uh, worst signals out of all the ones we're tracking here. Uh, you should, uh, if you're interested in pursuing any of this, you can download the KML files from which this video was produced. Play around with it. One good thing about doing uh, doing it this way is we can choose any viewpoint, we can uh, any magnification, any viewpoint we like. It's like having a a camera that we can place anywhere we choose to in the scene gives you a lot more flexibility than real cameras where you actually have to have helicopters to see scenes like this. Now we're down to the last lap. We're still tracking Nathan Versi. Now notice the overshoot from Mick again. Now we're moving up to track Jeremy Ross for the run home. Now these are probably the three least reliable trackers. So you'll see the overshoot on the corner there. Jeremy Ross going off into the Never ever. It doesn't happen so often with his because there's no other trails out there. Mix heading off and coming back on track again. Notice the overshoot. This is to do with this, this assumption. It looks like that the GPS is assuming going ahead. We're down to half speed now. That was full, full time. Now we're down to half speed. We're coming into the finishing line. Notice Dean Rogers and Pete Rogers coming in to watch the finish there. Here we compare distances measured with video to distances measured with GPS. We have overlaid an image prepared from video camera film from the front left. Before the race, a grid was marked out, filmed and removed. Video at finish was overlaid on previous video and rider positions marked on the grid as yellow circles. The image was warped to view from above, transparently laid on the ground in Google Earth, rotated to match the scene, scaled horizontally and vertically to match the lengths drawn in Earth, translated so that Mick is over the yellow dot. This is about 0.3 seconds before the video shot was taken. Then we see Jake is about 5.7 metres long and 1.2 metres across from the yellow dot, identifying fake Jake in the video. Not really accurate enough for a photo finish. Moving forward one second at one fifth of real time, so that we are now about 0.7 seconds after the video image was shot. Then sliding the capture video image so that Mick is over his yellow dot again, we see the distance between Mick and Jake has changed from 9 metres to 9.6 metres, right. suggesting about a 2 km an hour speed difference. Well, the race is over now. Uh, the last minute or so of commentary all took place in about 2 seconds of race time. Uh, we're just going to follow Jeremy as he comes around to the end now. You'll notice that he uh, heads off across this road, but uh, inaccuracy in the GPS will suggest he takes off across the countryside. You might have noticed uh, a bit of uh, mismatch between the imagery and the location data. That's normal whenever you zoom right in on uh, Google Earth. You'll never get it. There's always a few metres difference between uh, the imagery and the uh, match. It's surprisingly good considering that there's imagery covering the whole earth. Uh, we're just coming in, we just finished, all finished now, and thank you for watching the video.